Hi, Manny. Joyce here, just not on video. Good morning. Good morning. We went twice. <clears throat> okay, we're ready to begin. Are we good to go, Tobias? Okay. Green. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it for now. I know he says it. You can click and get the get the, the, the Hollywood Square version. Yeah, how come I don't see it on this one? Do you know where it is? I don't want to hit the wrong button and blow up Tobias's thing, but I don't know. So, gallery. Better? That's it, that. Eh? Yeah. No Marsh, no, no Bob. Yeah, you got we good. Oh, okay, yeah, no good. All right, all right. All right, good morning. I guess we're okay to go. This meeting of the uh, Post Finance Committee uh, called order and welcome everyone. Let's uh, let's do a roll call. I'm sure, I, I believe that we're shy. We'll be operating as a uh, as a subcommittee of the subcommittee. So um, Madam Secretary, if you wanna call the roll. Brazil. Here. Bowie. 
Doyle. Long. Here. Marsh. Here. Ramirez. Thank you. All right. This is the time I have to read a long statement about public comment. This is time set aside for members of the public. To Unmuted. We're good. To comment on items on the agenda. I will manage the public comment period in deference to the committee's workload and meeting time restraints. Up to 15 minutes is allotted at the beginning of each meeting for public comments on items on the agenda. Based on recent events, more people than usual may want to address the committee. I don't think that will be true this morning here. Therefore, if required, we will go longer than 15 minutes, but we may have to limit the period to no more than an hour as we have to get through the agenda. Members of the public who wish to speak are asked to limit their remarks to five minutes. Um, pursuant to existing commission policy, we may conclude the public comment period if multiple speakers are voicing repetitive or similar statements and the 15 minute public comment period has expired. <clears throat> Please remember that this meeting is being transcribed, so I may politely interrupt and ask you to repeat or speak slowly and clearly. Now, if there's anyone watching who would like to address the committee during public comment, please call into the number shown on the screen at this time. We will take the calls on a first come first serve basis. If other persons are in the queue, you will be placed on hold until your turn to address the committee. You will know when it is your turn to talk when you hear that you are unmuted. Once again, you will know it is your turn to speak when you hear unmuted. We will wait for approximately one minute to allow for individuals to call in. When it is your turn, if you wish, please state your name and organization. Uh, the first item agenda is to approve the action summary in minutes. Recognizing the lack of a quorum, we'll simply make a recommendation. Um, is there a motion to approve the action or to recommend approval of action summary in minutes? Is there a motion? And absent objection, how about we'll substitute the roll call and approve the recommendation? Is there an objection to approving the minutes? Rick, you good with the minutes? I'm good. <laughs> All right. We'll start off with a report on the uh, proposed budget for fiscal year 21-22. This is an easy report. John and Scott, if you have anything to add, jump in in, in a moment. But uh, essentially, uh, the budget is the same as it was, as we saw in, uh, in January, as proposed by the governor. It's basically the same budget. Uh, can you put up the, are we doing the slides? Can you get that slide up there? <clears throat> As you can see, the bottom line of that 83 mil, oh, back to the first one, there you go. Under the proposed 21-22 budget in the far right, the bold $83 million, there's the post budget. It is essentially, it is the budget that was proposed in January, so there were no changes made in the May revision. Uh, the number of PYs, I, I believe, remains the same at 116, right? Yeah, on- January uh, to May? Yep. Yeah. Per uh, Department of Finance, it's, it shows 116, um, and we've reached out and discussed with them. They understand and have acknowledged to us that that's not the real number. The real number is what uh, the um, state controller provides to us, and that number is in the 135.6, I believe, is, is the accurate number. In, in, I'm sorry, I was corrected. 135.8. Okay, good, good. So takeaways from the uh, uh, for the 21-22 proposed budget, as you can see, it looks to be like, uh, if you look at the total post budget authority, it looks like a $10 million reduction, which it is actually a $10 million reduction, but it's the $10 million reversion that we spoke about in February, which was essentially funds that were uh, provided from the uh, legislature for, <clears throat> and I think it was Manny Room Scott, it was a $34 million, wasn't it originally? That actually came from the, the $25 million. It came from the $25 was, million for use. That was reappropriated from the 1819 budget uh, specifically for distance learning for this current fiscal year. And so this money reverted uh, willingly from post and the administration, uh, largely due, I believe, to the COVID, uh, the inability to get the money out and use it in a timely fashion. So while it does reflect what looks to be a, a $10 million hit, you can also see it's all general fund. The general fund budget authority goes from 45 million to 35 million. That is what that uh, $10 million is. There are no other major issues I don't, I don't believe to talk about in terms of this budget. There are a couple of minor things. The 5% the, the um, hit to state ops, which is hitting all state agencies. 
That's about a million four out of the post budget. And then there's a reappropriation authority for $10 million, which is a, a fairly technical item. John or Scott, do you have anything you'd like? Yeah, to that's, add to? that's correct. Um, the the $1.432 million that uh, reduces our, our overall budget from the May revise down, or it will at some point when it gets uh, finalized and published, <clears throat> um, is, uh, was a, uh, an item that was a, from a budget letter that was provided to all state agencies, as you said, and required us to, to come up with uh, ways to reduce. And their suggested reductions uh, were discretionary programs, reducing our lease space, uh, reduced staff travel, and other uh, miscellaneous operational expenses, including contracts and items like uh, uh, telework and what that would do relative to utilities, printing, and things like that. And so that, that was the drill that we were given back in November. Uh, Department of Finance provided us that that number of 1.432, which they split up uh, between 990,000 out of the state penalty fund and, and 442 out of the general fund. And so that uh, that work that we did with with DOF was uh, accomplished. And I have a rundown if you wish to go through it of no, how, I we, think how we achieved that goal. I think we're good there. That's a the five percent is being faced by virtually all state agencies. And as far as we know, at this time, it's, it will remain permanent. So we can move on to the next item, which is a report on the projected revenues. We do the same chart that we do every time in the finance committee. And as you can see, it started to level off a little bit. The state penalty fund revenue decline. It was bound to, to level off at some point, whether this remains consistent or whether it goes continues to go down, we don't know. Uh, nonetheless, uh, finance and the administration and the legislature have shown confidence in post by essentially backfilling this with general fund. And we hope that 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 is the, that will continue. Uh, any comments or questions on the revenue situation? Then uh, John or Scott on, on net number five, the report on previous fiscal years, and then the report on expenditures for 2021 for the, why don't you go ahead on uh, number five, the report. Yeah, so the uh, report on previous fiscal years, uh, we'll start off with the 1920 uh, fiscal year. Uh, you'll see that uh, we've included the $15 million that we provided back out of the general fund back to the state uh, last year as a part of the COVID relief. Um, and so that's reduced our, our uh, overall uh, balances in um, between the state penalty fund and the general fund down to $13 million uh, remaining. Uh, of course, the contracts, the uh, local assistance, and all the items that, uh, that we would normally expend um, were severely impacted by COVID. Uh, so we don't have those expenditures that we would have had in previous years. Okay, we'll go to uh, the, <clears throat> go ahead on the uh, expenditure report. And I guess we're good to go. And if, and if you want to touch on the TRRs, yeah, we can zip right over to, to the TRRs. You there, John? Great, thank you. Uh, TRRs, uh, pretty self-explanatory. We uh, have uh, FY 1920 up there at, uh, we process 75,000, uh, almost 76,000 TRRs uh, for uh, nearly $22 million in, in reimbursement back to the local agencies. Uh, Again, you're looking at uh, current fiscal year to date at the bottom figure we processed as of uh, our last closing of last week, 40,000 uh, TRRs for 7.8. And that's clearly a reflection of, of the training um, that the agencies weren't sending their folks to due to COVID last year. All right, thanks. And then we'll start on what, what will be the bulk of this here and will be discussions about contracts. We can start with the uh, report on contracts approved by the commission for uh, the prior and current fiscal year. Uh, we, can, we can walk through those if anyone has any questions or wants to report on any of the uh, prior or current year contracts or on the date they were extended to. Otherwise, the bulk of the discussion I think we'll get into will be on the uh, contracts that need new approval. Scott, do you want to talk at all about the uh, prior or current year? Yeah, we both the 1920 um, contract year and the current 2021 contract year, we've um, extended almost all of the, the contracts for time uh, just to give the, the vendors an opportunity to, to spend the money uh, 
uh, that, that they were allotted via the contract and uh, give up more time for the agencies to send their staff to training. As you look in the far right column at the dates they were extended to, is it fair to assume for anybody who might be listening that contracts that were extended to D December 2020, that that money has now reverted? It hasn't reverted yet. We haven't unencumbered those contracts yet. We're waiting for, um, and this is relative to the 1920 contracts, relative, waiting for uh, any straggling invoices to be sent our way or TRRs to be to be paid that they come in a little later than, than they would normally, but that they're open for that. But the balance of those funds that uh, were extended to 2020 would presumably be reverted fairly soon. Yes, unencumbered. Um, and, and so the 1819 will be reverted to, to the general fund this year, fiscal year 1819 funding, um, but 1920, uh, it would not revert for another year. Okay. I think those similar comments apply really to, uh, to, the, to the current year. Correct, yes. Yeah. So then we go to the, con the report on contracts requiring approval by the commission. This one will take a little more time and <clears throat> Will be a little more difficult to follow. If you hold on with this for a moment because the sequential numbering in the agenda doesn't line up with the numbers of the contracts that are in the chart. So we're going to go in order to try to, to track this. We'll go by uh, agenda. We'll go by the agenda uh, item number. Um, so, and I will try to follow them in order as best as I can. Number nine, let's go to number nine, the QAP. We'll start by putting this one over for a moment. We'll come back to this. And number 10, the local agency audits by the uh, state controllers agency for $250,000. This is a continuing contract to audit up to 14 local agencies and presenters. Um, the last three fiscal years have recovered about $112,000. So it's been, it seems to be money well spent. The state controllers office has a good reputation. Uh, this is an ongoing, <clears throat> excuse me, an ongoing contract. Uh, would anyone like a presentation on the state controller's audit contract? Any discussion, about any concerns? If not, maybe we get a, a motion for a recommendation from the post, from the sub subcommittee. Rick, any concerns here? No, I, I, no I'd move it forward. All right. <clears throat> so we'll note in the absence of a quorum that uh, the finance committee subcommittee will uh, recommend a support position on the on number 10. <clears throat> now, number 11, this is a contract to continue the use of force training the trainer class. Um, this is one we're also gonna put over towards the end of this discussion because the original contract was never brought before the commission. So I'd like to just come back to this and we'll move through a couple others first. Number 12, the report on the learning uh, portal contract amendments. Let me find those real quick. All right, there are three amendments here uh, to a three-year uh, three contract that was approved by the commission in 2015 and again in 2018 for an additional three years. The problem is that these amendments were never brought before the commission. Uh, it was an error. Um, there are several of these that we'll see in the next few minutes. Um, post staff say the errors were inadvertent. There is certainly no reason to believe or think otherwise. Nonetheless, it's not great that uh, we're essentially going to be asked to uh, approve these amendments in, in, in retro fashion. Uh, and there's several of these, so we'll go through them. Um, no interest in a, in a pound of flesh anywhere, except that we, ha we have to do better. So that uh, we were asked to uh, approve, the commission is asked to approve these contracts and we need, you know, we need better information and we need to know that they're actually being brought before us. Um, <clears throat> John or Scott, do you want to go through the three very quickly? Uh, the, I can do it fairly quickly. The $47,000 was added to a $600,000 contract that we approved, but we never saw this. So now we have to go back and approve it uh, because it's more than $25,000. Any, any contract amendment more than $25,000 has to be approved by the commission. So that is one. The second is $152,000. It was also added to this contract without commission, a commission approval. And then finally, there's a million six amendment uh, from money appropriated by the legislature for learning portal uh, enhancement that was never brought to the commission at all. Um, <clears throat> all three of these, so these are three on top of what we'll see uh, later with the, um, 
train the trainer issue just kind of slid by. We, we presume and we assume it was inadvertent and there's no reason to think otherwise, but we are being asked to approve these in retro fashion. Also, I would note on the million six, it is a non-competitive bid caught my attention. And one of the problems is this, the information was late in, late coming. Uh, we did get an explanation uh, yesterday really for why it's a non-competitive bid. And Rick, if you wanna talk about that, we can ask staff to go over that a little bit. I think that the information provided is somewhat convincing that there's a reason it was a non-competitive bid. It would just be better if we could get this information uh, a little earlier than the day before the hearing so we can take a good look at it. So we can do, we can discuss these, we can go through each one. Uh, Scott, maybe you wanna to touch on each amendment. I don't know if there's anything you wish to add. Uh, Rick, if you have any questions here. Uh, from an addition um, to this, we, um, as, as you indicated, the, the any, any amendment above $25,000 has to come back to you. <clears throat> then any, any contract uh, initial or otherwise at $175,000 or over uh, needs to go to commission. Um, those are our own internal um, rules and regulations uh, here at Post, as well as for the commission. And, and as you mentioned, uh, that, that was an error on our part. Uh, we've put in place um, items, both uh, call it retraining, call it messaging, uh, both to my staff in the contract submit, uh, as well as the program managers uh, throughout the, all the bureaus at Post, uh, uh, reiterating what the, the policies are relative to our contracts. So that's, that's clear and pushed out and uh, there are now um, items in place uh, both in my shop and administrative services on the contract side as well as the budget and, and accounting side that will kind of stop gap uh, measure to to head off any future um, items like this where we would um, redo a contract for an amendment or new otherwise that uh, violated our own policies Roseanne Richel the bureau chief of um, LTRs here to give some more detail relative to those specific contracts and amendments. Um, if you have other questions and, and or Roseanne, if you have a presentation that you're going to do. Uh, I think the, the two amounts are relatively minor and, and, and somewhat uh, clear in, in the presentation. Roseanne, maybe you'd want to address the, uh, um, the non-competitive bid issue with the $1.6 million. That kind of jumps out at you. And now I did get information yesterday to read, which you know, cleared it up for me, but again, that's a little late in the process for uh, me or any of the members of the commission who may choose to read the stuff and might come across this non-competitive bid, which and would want to understand why we're doing a million six non-competitive bid, largely because contracts are where the rubber hits the road in government, and that's where you get into trouble, that's where you have into get into problems with cronyism or whatever else, so maybe you could just, for the sake of whoever may be listening here, explain the, a little bit about the uh, the need for a non-competitive bid on the million six. Okay. Yes, you? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could just add a couple of things before Roseanne gets into the specifics. So um, one, our apologies for, uh, for uh, kind of exceeding our authorities without bringing some of this information to the commission. As you mentioned, it was inadvertent, but if I could just go into an explanation as to what transpired with this uh, contract, and I know we provided this to you yesterday informally. I know the other commissioners and the other members of the finance committee uh, do not have that information. So that the original contract um, that you are seeing um, that we're addressing was actually approved in 2015 by the commission for $577,000. That's the original contract. In 2018, we came before the commission and asked for an amendment to the contract of an additional $598,000. That was approved by the commission, that amendment, amendment one. Where we misstepped is we actually increased the contract amount to $645,000, the equivalent of $47,000 higher than what the commission authorized us to spend. We are allowed to go up by $25,000 um, without bringing it back to the commission, obviously 47,000 is greater than, than 25,000. So that, that was uh, definitely a misstep on our part. Um, and in regards to amendment two, um, again, that was one that we did not bring to the commission at all. That was for $152,000 to amend that contract uh, for pellet B testing. 
again, that's higher than the $25,000 uh, authority threshold. So um, we misstepped in that regards in terms of our internal policy. And then amendment three is actually, uh, I believe what Roseanne is going to talk about now. And that is for $1.6 million that, uh, that we did not bring before the commission. So there is some confusion internally um, among some of us in terms of what needed to come before the commission and not. We agree that this 1.6 million should come to the commission. The confusion was that the uh, staff had submitted a budget change proposal to the um, Department of Finance that got approved that was included in the uh, budget. It went through the legislature um, last year and it got approved in, into the budget. Um, the specific authority to spend up to $2 million, uh, $2 million, $3 million in a certain way for increasing um, our capacity with the learning management system. So the misunderstanding was, well, it's in the budget. It was articulated in the BCP. The question came up, why do we need to go to the commission? We do recognize that that needed to come to the commission, just like we you know, get other authorities from the Budget Act, but that's why it did not come through. That contract was ultimately approved by DGS and signed um, for $1.6 million, and that did not go through the commission. So that's kind of an explanation of what transpired with that contract. It's not to excuse uh, what we've, um, what we've done, um, the mistakes that we've made, but that's how it transpired. And then I think Roseanne can get into specifics on the non-compete aspect of it and what that $1.6 million does. Thanks, Roseanne and uh, Mr. Chair for allowing me. And, and before you go, Roseanne, one thing I would also note is, you know, I was gonna do this a little bit at the close of this discussion on contracts, is I think we need to discuss, and maybe we can do this going forward, Scott and John and Manny and Marie and Scott, a little more uniformity in the background explanations of these contracts. I mean, the, the commission is required to uh, approve these contracts and we've, there's a bit of, a, a, of an inconsistency, I believe, in the, in the write-ups between the various contracts we're asked to approve. Some will get, you know, 45 attachments, which isn't really the answer either. And some there'll be six paragraphs. Um, in some, we have to add, I, in most cases, will ask for a bunch more additional information that's not there. And we usually, and people say, oh, sorry, we should have included that, which is good. And I'm glad that it's available, but for the purposes of transparency and making it available to the uh, full subcommittee and the full commission uh, in the agendas that are published, I think we should have at least a discussion going forward about maybe trying to do a little bit more in terms of uniformity in the, uh, in the uh, background explanation and information that is that accompanies these uh, contracts that we are supposed to approve. I don't, don't suggest we do a full uh, BCP budget change proposal as the Department of Finance requires. I would suggest for the staff and for maybe a starting point for discussions in terms of uniformity that we at least reference the BCP requirements, which touch on all the bases of what needs to be included. Who's your audience? What are you trying to show? How do you justify the program? Uh, what about current year, prior year, and so forth? So we have just a little bit of a picture when we're asked to approve these things. That in addition to, uh, Scott alluded to making sure that, you know, going forward that we don't just miss uh, contracts and amendments that have to be approved. But this is an example that Roseanne's gonna talk about because there's really no way for anyone up until now to evaluate or to, to wonder why is this a, a, no, a non-competitive bid. And as everyone in government knows, it's those non-competitive bids that get you in trouble. So Roseanne. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, Roseanne Ritchell, I'm Bureau Chief for the Learning Technology Resources Bureau. Uh, in my bureau, I oversee the self-paced courses and the learning management system, learning portal, um, video program, and use of force uh, VR simulators. What I'm gonna talk about right now with per, uh, pertaining to the amendments are the learning management system and the learning portal with regards to the 1.6 million. Uh, again, as Director Alvarez had stated earlier, when COVID had struck last year, uh, we were given, there was a $10, $10 million reversion back to post. And with that $10 million, we were asked to uh, 
change our learning management system and make self-paced courses and the availability for self-paced course, courses more readily available because in-person courses were no longer uh, available due, again, due to COVID. So what happened was that $10 million was split in half. Five million of it went to MCPB uh, Management Counseling Unit under Bureau Chief Drew uh, Wyatt and the other 5 million came to my bureau specifically for self-paced courses, uh, course conversions, and also for updating and modernizing the learning management system and the development of a learning management system for outside agencies who do not perhaps have a learning management system, making that available for them to host their own self-paced courses. So my team was tasked with how do we do that? And with the money that we had, we had discussed that we split the 5 million that came to my bureau, 2 million of it accommodated the self-paced course, uh, course conversions out of Flash Adobe, which went away in the end of 2020. So we're applying that 2 million towards that, that is for nine courses that are being converted. And then the other 3 million is for the modernization of the learning management system, which is where the 1.6 million of that 3 million comes into play right now. The remaining 1.3 million has not, um, we've not discussed what we're going to do with that. Uh, that's still sitting off to the side, but with regards to the 1.6 million, one of the things that we needed to do was uh, upgrade the system, upgrade the learning management system to allow for hosting outside agencies who want to deliver self-paced training. And in doing so, we are creating modules and components within the current learning management system and the current, current learning portal to be able to accommodate that, that learning. And it's taking uh, a lot of time. One of the pieces of that is once we de uh, determined what the scope of work would be, we had sent that over to the Department of General Services, DGS. Once DGS received that, they made a determination that this project probably needed to go to CDT, which is California Department of Technology for review to determine whether or not it was an IT project or an IT service project. Because it is categorized as an IT project because there is uh, upgrades in technology, uh, they sent us back information saying that we now needed to go through a project analysis life cycle process, which is a four stage process. That process is called PAL. What the PAL process does, which is a very extensive process, is it allows us to go through our business model with regards to who we contract with for the learning management system and the host of the learning portal. It, it's a checks and balance. It makes us, uh, it allows us to see if we are uh, being cost effective and good stewards of the money that is provided to us for the learning technology piece of it. And it also uh, helps us determine whether or not we are providing an effective learning management system. We're currently in stage two of that uh, PAL process. When we had discussions with DGS and CDT, uh, one of the things that had come up was we can't necessarily move forward with determining if we should get another vendor for the learning management system because we are currently in contract with our current vendor. So if we were to go out during this process and seek another vendor to come in and simultaneously work with our current vendor, um, I heard an analogy early this morning, which I think is proper for this. It would be like building a Ford vehicle and then getting it serviced at Chevy you have two different uh, systems in place. You don't know if the technologies are compatible at this point. And so that what that PAL process do is, PAL process does is it forces us to look at our business model and the delivery and whether or not we are uh, utilizing the monies that are given to us in a cost-effective manner, which also provides the best product for our end users. So the non-competitive bid with discussions back and forth with DGS, we believe that that was the best route to take, hence the $1.6 million being awarded to the current vendor to help us through this process. In short, uh, that makes uh, a shorter route would simply say, suggest that uh, it makes sense to use the, the, the people who already got the feet on the ground because they know what they're doing. My concern here is that this just needs to be presented to us before the fact. So that Mr. Chair, this position. if I can say something, I um, have to say that this 
totally rests on my shoulders, um, the oversight, and I should have known, I should have caught it. Uh, what I do want to say is the procedures have been put into place that this will not happen again. I think what we've done in the past with posts is that we've always had reoccurring contracts. What we've had recently is a lot of things that the legislature and the governor's office has thrown at us, such as grants, the Dr. Weber money, uh, the governor's office earmarking money for certain programs that we have never put into place. And I think it's been a growing process for us. And because of that, everything came at one time, it was a perfect storm and we have rectified the problems. And we, I, I understand what you're talking about as far as consistency with the contract submission that will be handled in the future. But this was something that was done inadvertently and completely at no fault of anybody internally. We have a lot of new staff, which is no excuse. But now that we've had these different processes that have been thrown at us, we know exactly what we need to do to make sure this doesn't happen again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, let's move on to number 13. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, before you go on, I have a couple. Rick, questions. sorry. <laughs> it's embodied voice. Um, first of all, um, LMS is huge. We've been working on this for a long, long time. It's, it's um, way overdue. So um, one, kudos to staff for looking at things like um, the life cycle analysis on this and, you know, getting DGS and CDT involved, which is, which is big. Um, Manny, a couple of questions. Um, and, and I thank Maria for falling on the sword and accepting responsibility, but do we have some systems problems that may be slowing you down? Uh, a couple of things. One, $25,000 to amend. I'm going to go back up to the, the first amendment, the 47,000. Is 25,000 too low? That's a small dollar amount to amend an ongoing contract that's in the millions. Um, Mr. Brazil, I need to step in. And I talked about this with Manny earlier yesterday, and I totally agree with you. I think that $25,000 is was set into place years ago, and it doesn't allow us to have the authority to move things forward in a more quickly fashion. Not that we're trying to, we're completely transparent when it comes to the commission and to the public. It's just $25,000 is it's somewhat going to hamstring us in the future, as it already has, obviously. Yeah, so, Jeff, I, I would propose maybe when we have a quorum in finance or we talk about it at the, the commission meeting uh, to figure out how we change that, because $25,000 is just way too low to make adjustments. Um, so I'm not sure the process to, to potentially change that, what it requires. And then the second question, Manny, um, we we are not very nimble because we only have three meetings a year. So when you're you're talking about these big dollar amounts and these big changes, the fact that we don't bring stuff to us is cumbersome because we don't have a lot of meetings. Uh, and not that I'm looking for a solution to this, but when we're trying to be adaptable and, and, and flexible to change, it's really hard when your staff is waiting, has to wait months to implement something. So I just throw that up for, for food for thought for the, the main commission, that maybe our processes and our meetings are hamstringing you and your staff uh, needlessly. And I, so I just throw that out for, for thought. Andy, please, Andy, yeah, I think I, I agree with Rick that the, the processes need to be discussed and not, not, not just the amounts, but how to. Sure, if I can, uh, if I may go to the first uh, question that you posed, Commissioner Brazil, that was, uh, asked or answered by um, Maria, my colleague Maria. I, I agree with Maria. There are systems in place for us to catch these things. It wasn't Maria's fault. I mean, there was a number of different levels um, that have to sign off on these contracts and we just missed it. There was some significant discussion once we missed it, just confusion amongst our staff as to whether things like those contracts even needed to come to the commission. As I've mentioned, I think we're all very much in agreement that they do need to come to the commission, um, just like every other contract. I think we've clarified that at least internally, and I think we'll catch it. Um, yet also, um, we did have a conversation, I believe, yesterday or sometime last week about the, the $25,000 threshold for amendments and the $175,000 threshold for contracts to be approved internally without going to the commission. Um, I venture to say that that rule has been in place 20 to 30 years ago. Um, we'll have, I have the specific date. We can get that by the end of this meeting if, if need be, but I believe it's been in place for over 20 years. Discussion we had was, yeah, the threshold is way too low, but at the same time, we said now is not the time to ask 
for approval to go above that based on everything that's transpired and the, uh, the consternation that we're going through over the contracts. Perhaps the timing is not good for us to be asking for that to be raised, um, just based on the fact that we missed a few things. Um, we leave that to you all. Um, that is in the post policy manual and I will try to get the date by the time we're done when that threshold was established. So in terms of the commission meetings, yes, it is difficult. I think it will get easier for us, knock on wood, um, in that the commission meetings have happened in uh, February, where we've pushed through 99% of our contracts, where we try to do 100% of our contracts. It's, uh, it's, the timing of it is difficult in that the budget's released January 10th, and by February, we have to go before the commission with proposed contracts based on the uh, on the proposed budget. Um, the the uh, agenda has to be published sometime at the end of January, so we really only have a week or two to prepare our proposed contract amounts for the commission meeting. The reason why I think it will hopefully change is we've changed the cycle of commission meetings that the February commission meeting will now happen in March which will give us more time. Obviously, we've also proposed having four meetings going forward, March, June, September, and December, which will give us a little bit more time to catch up should we have problems. But that has been definitely a challenge, uh, Commissioner Brazil. I would suspect that the bureaus um, that are under the gun to get those contracts in place in February are, uh, are pushing the envelope, you are correct. Rick, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Um, and, and Manny, I, I appreciate the fact that you, um, staff doesn't want to bring it up given that we, uh, we, we missed something, right? Which is totally understandable. Um, and I agree with, with Jeff that there's, there's no deception on post part. We're asking your staff to do a heck of a lot. Um, and so sometimes we, we miss things. That's, I, I, I'm not focused on that. Um, but Jeff, and we don't have enough to vote, we don't have enough to bring something forward, but we, we should talk about uh, raising that limit from 25. I would support raising it so that they can make adjustments on the fly. Uh, 25 is not a lot given the totality of our budget as far as the percentage. So for, for future discussion or discussion uh, later in the commission meeting, potentially looking at, at modifying that. And I agree. And I think what we should do is add that to some discussions going forward that I mentioned in terms of the write-ups for the contracts that we do have to approve, because the I also want to be clear that I don't want to add to the workload by requiring the staff to do full BCPs or something for every contract. There's got to be a way for we can just agree, basically, here's the kind of basic information that needs to be provided. And what is an appropriate, I mean, do we just do a cost inflator to the 25,000 or do we knock it up? Those are discussions that I think we can pretty easily have and try to streamline the whole thing so that we don't run into these issues going forward, you know. Okay. If I may, uh, again, Mr. Uh, Chair, one other thing on the back end uh, for those uh, at post that are feeling that, uh, hey, we need to pay a little bit more scrutiny to the contracts when they, when we first get going. The other, the back end that we're asking them to do, which they have been doing for a number of years now, is once those contracts are approved by the commission, they are scrambling to get all those contracts in place by July 1. As you know, historically, we weren't ready a lot of times July 1 to execute on contracts. Once they were approved, it would take us till August, September. So they're under the gun to get the amounts in the bureaus and then the uh, administrative services bureaus under the gun to get those contracts in place by July 1. So they have done a, a, a phenomenal job, I would say, in pushing those things along. And I, I thank them for that, not to, uh, again, not to minimize or mitigate uh, the issues with the timing of uh, bringing them to the commission. But thank you. No, and I, guess, I think we can continue the discussion in a few minutes because we've got a couple other problematic contracts to discuss before we even get there and, and that don't really deal with the amounts. And I, and I think I agree with uh, Commissioner Brazil completely that if there's any way we can uh, make this process more, uh, uh, more streamlined and, and not slow you down. Uh, we're all ears on this. So moving to, to number 13, uh, the report on the, on the legacy self-paced course conversions, uh, Roseanne's alluded, alluded to it a little bit, but uh, well, let me just say this back up to the, uh, to the previous discussion. We could, you know, we have some real, we have some options. We can void the contract. I don't think anybody wants to do that or void the amendments, but 
the uh, uh, Rick, I guess, would you agree that uh, going forward that we recommend to the full commission to approve and ret retro approve the, uh, the contract then? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. That will that we will do. The number thirteen is another uh, another problem here that was not presented to the uh, to the commission. Uh, this is part of the, as Manny alluded to, other examples. This is part of the twenty twenty one budget proposal. Post received two million dollars to convert, as Roseanne talked about, nine existing courses for the learning portal. But again, Post never brought the contract before the commission, thinking that an approved budget appropriation was sufficient. Correct. Uh, the problem is that isn't sufficient and it does have to come before the commission. So this is another example of one that just simply did not get brought before the commission. And so we are being asked to approve it in retro fashion here. Um, Scott, I don't know if you want to address this at all or uh, Manny. I don't think we need to get it. I don't think, again, the issue here is so much the substance of the issue as much as it was just the timing and the fact that it didn't come before the commission. So Manny, Correct. maybe you want to address it. Yes, sir. It's a, correct. It's the exact same issue. The budget change proposal was very, very specific. It broke down $5 million, $3 million, and $2 million. Um, a specific portion of that money was to um, convert nine uh, training courses, um, self-paced training courses from Flash to HTML. It's correct, right? We're talking about the conversion. Um, we did not bring that to the commission again because we were under the impression that the, uh, the Budget Act allowed us to, to move forward. And again, so it's not, I don't believe, an issue of substance here, because in this case, it was a BCP. Um, this would be a part of a conversation going forward. Maybe we just even make that, I mean, I didn't, we don't really have access to the BCP. That would probably answer any questions here about the substance of the proposal. It's an issue of, uh, of just bringing, basically not bringing it before the commission. And this is a $2 million proposal so that we're being asked to approve in retro fashion. Again, Rick, I don't know, absent uh, any substantive concerns about the BCP, do you have any concerns going forward recommending to the full commission that we approve this today? No, not at all. Any comments by anyone else on this one? All right, then we'll uh, do number 14. This is a take a breath time because this is $900,000 to develop learning portal courses. It's a continuing effort to develop self-paced learning portal courses. Uh, would Rick, does anyone, would anyone like a presentation or like a comment on this? I don't believe there are any apparent issues about this. Um, there were no, uh, no process problems either with this, with this $900,000. Any questions or Rick, should we uh, recommend approval to the full commission? Yeah, I would suggest that, yes. Easy enough. Mr. Chair, if I may, I think I Please. misspoke. The conversion um, of the courses was under that $900,000. Is that correct, Roseanne, or no? I, I may have misspoken. This is to develop the course. Yeah. No, uh, Director Alvarez, there, there's two different things going on with the self-paced courses. The $2 million for the course conversions comes out of that original $10 million. Uh, we have not signed any contracts for that yet. That still is over at DGS. So we've not moved forward with that uh, any of that money yet. And then the 900,000 is for our normal uh, annual budget request to develop self-paced courses. Mm -hmm. They do kind of run together there. All right, then we'll move to uh, number 11, the last of the, uh, uh, the, the, the reporting problems. This is the use of force train the trainer contract. Let me find that one. This became a, this is a strange one a little bit because this, as I, as I read it, it was, uh, it's, it's requesting $667,000 for a, uh, a train the trainer force options course uh, with Long Beach State. And, and as, uh, as I read it, it said, kept referring to the, uh, the current year contract, which I had never heard of or seen and nor was there any information about it at all. I called the, uh, called Manny, called the executive director and said, well, I'm confused what's going on. And, he was more confused than I was, uh, or as confused as I was. This is just another one that had never been brought before the commission. The initial contract, which I believe was the $301,000 had never come before the commission. So now we're being asked to approve a doubling of that contract amount and the original contract never came before the commission. This is where I started conversations with uh, Manny about how do, we, how do we address some of these uh, things going forward. I, no, uh, 
The assumption is there's nothing, you know, nothing malevolent going on, simply uh, errors and so forth. But this one was a bit difficult because there's very little information available. Uh, so subsequent, more, of it, more information wasn't made available to me. Again, I don't believe as far as I know and can tell that there are any uh, content issues, particularly with this contract. Again, it was just a matter of the underlying initial contract was never brought before the commission. So it was yet another one of these. Um, and there we stand with this one. Uh, it's basically a doubling of the prior year, or of the current year contract, which was never brought before the commission. Anything you'd like to address on that one, Mr. E.D.? Thank you again, Mr. Chair. That is correct. That is that use of force uh, training course, that train the trainer course is the 24 hour course. We've spoken about at previous commission meetings that uh, came as a requirement of Senate Bill 230 that we develop a course. Um, you are correct in that we signed a contract with CSU Long Beach um, last year to present that train the trainer course to the tune of $300,000. Uh, that would take us through the remainder of this year. That course is being put on one to two times per month across the state. Um, that initial contract did not come before the commission. Uh, obviously, it was above $25,000, so we should have uh, brought that forward. Commissioner Brazil, any comments? I think we're back in the same kind of a situation being asked to you know, approve this in retro fashion. However, I don't as far as I can tell, there aren't any substantive uh, policy issues. No issues. Well, then we'll recommend to the full commission approval of, uh, of this contract. Uh, the last contract item to discuss is number nine, the quality assurance. Uh, we're gonna put that over again until October, discussions with, uh, with Manny and so forth going forward. But I do, I do wish to mention for, I guess, the staff's uh, benefit and so forth is in February, we put this over until now because we raised questions of uh, return on investment, basically. There was really not, nothing in the write-up that talked about why this is a solid return on the investment, what we could do to make sure to, uh, to provide that information. None of that information was provided for this hearing as well, uh, and which raised further, you know, in, in raised further questions. Um, the write-up, um, for 1920 is included, but nothing from 2021. Um, talks about $750,000 was approved in 1920. Talks about $150,000 was transferred to the Basic Training Bureau and says see the attached, but there is no attached. Uh, there were expenditures of 320,000 out of that 750, but that leaves 280,000 unaccounted for, and there's no explanation for that. Nor is there any explanation of how the 766,000 would be used uh, going forward. I thought it also raised issues then not only of uh, return on investment concerns, but how is the program being operated in terms of uh, construction and efficacy. And we had discussions with the, with the executive director who agreed to, to put this over and to do a, uh, a better and more thorough proposal for October. Um, Mr. Executive Director, would you like to comment on this one at this point? Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first of all, the QAP, the current contract for QAP has been extended through December 31st of this year. So we still have QAP money from last year's contract. So we should still be okay to continue doing QAP um, through the remainder of this year. The, the, the QAP ask for 766,000 is for next fiscal year. Um, covering July 1 through June 30th. We recognize um, the points that you've brought forward in terms of putting more detail into the agenda item to provide some current information, current data in there. Um, we will bring it back in uh, September. We're committed to putting more detail into the agenda item and bring it back in September. I think some of the internal discussions that we had, again, not to minimize this, was that whether it should be provided in a verbal presentation or actually documented into the agenda item. We understand your concerns and your, um, your, um, your strong desire to have it in the agenda item. We don't, I, I don't disagree. I mean, it should be in writing, it should be memorialized. So we will move forward with that and put it put as much detail as possible into the agenda item. Try to clarify any, um, any questions that 
a reader might have to that agenda item. All right, any other further discussion or comment on that item? Then we are left only with old business of which there is none and new business of which there is none. And I'll simply note that um, with Commissioner Brazil's uh, uh, urging and mine as well that I think we'll have to, we'll we'll have conversations about just going forward of how to make this work best for for everyone so that the commission can feel confident in what they're approving and in what they're seeing uh, without being uh, deluged with material that, that we don't need to see and without uh, forcing your staff to do a bunch of work that need not be done. So we'll try to figure out the best way going forward. We I don't think anyone believes that there was any untoward. Uh, intentions here, but there were just a, some balls were dropped and we just want to make sure they don't get dropped again going forward. And with that, that would be the conclusion of the Finance Committee. Any comments, concerns, need to share? And we're adjourned. <laughs>